bringing the benefits of the cloud to on-premises has never been easier. Hello, my name is Dave Morera. I'm going to give you an overview of how to onboard vSphere Plus with your on-prem environment. We have a lot of customers that have many different sites or even small sites, remote sites, global sites. And we understand it's very difficult to administer those vCenters that are distributed globally. vSphere Plus is going to allow us to bring not only those services to on-prem environments, but to have a global view of all those vCenters in one location, also a lot more features on top of that. So let's see how do we get started. So first off, we need to move to the subscription service that is vSphere Plus. It is a move from perpetual licensing to subscription licensing. So that is the VMware move to SaaS, and it's a keyless movement. So no longer do you have to keep track of all your licensing keys, a spreadsheet with hundreds or thousands of keys. Once you move over to vSphere Plus, it is keyless. Think of tokens, right? You buy tokens, and you can play in an arcade as long as you want, as long as you have tokens available. So connecting is super simple. This is our on-prem environment or environments for a company. It could be your company, a company do you know. So we could have a small number of vCenters or a very large number of vCenters. So think of uh, if it's this one of these squares, it's 100. So we have 600, 300, 200, et cetera. So we could manage hundreds or even thousands of vCenter from one location with vSphere Plus. So we have moved to vSphere Plus. So you talk to your account manager, and you as the customer move to vSphere Plus to be able to get all those benefits. You will receive an email. You will receive an email with a link to go out to, your, to VMware Cloud, and you will create an account if you don't have one yet. So VMware Cloud, it's where we are providing our services, cloud services. And we've been doing this for years, or, so it is not something new. So think about VMC on AWS, AVS, et cetera. So it is the same exact console. So if you have those services already, you already have an account. All you have to do now is to create an organization or enable an existing organization that has been entitled for vSphere Plus or vSyn Plus. Once you have done that, then the following steps are very easy and very quick. We need to connect the two sides. We need to connect the on-prem side to the cloud side. But we know, if you're security conscious, that we don't want to expose our internal environment to the outside. So what do we do? Well, most organizations are secure, especially nowadays. So we have a firewall or several firewalls and layers of security. Now we need to get to the cloud. So in order to do that, we're going to deploy gateway appliances internally on-prem. So we could architect this in a way that we could distribute this per site, or we can do it uh, or share, depending on the number of vCenter servers that you have. At the time of this recording, we can have an 8 to 1 ratio of vCenters to gateways. So we can connect eight vCenter servers to one single gateway appliance, and the number will change in the future. So in this case, we're going to deploy two gateway appliances. Great. Now what? Well, during the installation and configuration process, you will log in as an administrator, as an admin, and you will log in to the gateway appliance, both of them. And you will say, OK, step number one is to connect to my already existing account, an organization that has been enabled or entitled for vSphere Plus. If you have vSAN, then you can also have vSAN Plus. So we will log into the gateway and say, connect to my account remotely. So we're going to go out. The gateway is going to go out and connect to the cloud on port 443. So it's a secure connection, and it's doing that pairing between the gateway, not your internal environment, just the gateway, and your cloud account and organization specifically. The same is going to happen for the other gateway appliance. And now at this point, you have completed 
one out of two steps necessary. So these steps are very, very quick. It takes about an hour or even less. So we do need to make sure we have DNS, connect, uh, DNS resolution internally that we can get out on that port from the firewall and that we have the correct version for uh, vCenters and gateways. So now that we completed step number one, there's only one more step, and that is to register each one of those vCenter servers to the gateway appliance. So remember, I said we have a many to one ratio as far as gateway appliances. So right now it's eight to one. So we can connect eight vCenters to each one of those gateways. We have six here. We have five here. We're good. So let's go ahead and register those. So we're going to go ahead and add those vCenter servers to the gateway appliance. This is as easy as just providing your username and password, FQDN, or IP address over each one of those gateways. Once you connect one, you can move on to the next one, et cetera. But you can also add VCF environments as well. So if you have a VCF server here and you have VCF plus here, you can do that the same way. So we will add those vCenters to the gateway appliance. After that has been completed, it takes a few minutes, and then that entire connection process, the onboarding process, is completed. You will see here that the vCenters are connected to the gateway. The authentication is done internally. We're not sending usernames and passwords outside. We are going only out on port 443. There are several internal ports that we'll cover on la uh, later. But for now, that connection has been completed. We can talk to the cloud, to our account. And within a few minutes, then we can see all those vCenters in one single location. From then, after we do this, we can go ahead to each one of those vCenters or go to a centralized location in this UI that is going to show us all those vCenter servers in different views. We're going to see their resources, uh, resource utilization, CPU, memory, capacity, uh, et cetera. So we can see a lot of things that it is hard to see unless you log into each one of those vCenters. Alerts, security posture, et cetera. So it gives us that view. But you can also move to subscription from here. Remember, you have already moved on to vSphere Plus the subscription piece, your organization has been entitled to vSphere Plus. Now you need to go ahead and select which vCenters need to move on to subscription that have not moved on yet, or you can do it from one single location. That's as, as simple as selecting each one of those vCenters and click Move to Subscription. That covers the move, the connection of on-prem vCenter servers to the cloud without having to migrate anything out. We're, in, we're establishing a secure connection from on-prem, from a gateway, through the firewall to the cloud, and allow us to get all those benefits of the cloud, flexibility with subscription. We have the admin services, developer services, that is going to make it easier for you as an administrator to manage all those vCenters. It it's going to make it easier for you as your the CIO IT director to see what is your environment health like? What is your entire security posture like? What is happening here without having to log into each one of those? Everything in one single location and easy steps within an hour from start to finish. Thank you.